You're listening to the Run For Your Lives podcast. Welcome to the show. I'm Daphne. And I'm Pake. And this is the Run for Your Lives podcast. This episode, we're talking about the 2021 event that we're doing right now, where we don't talk about a movie. And instead, we have a special <laughs> little uh, one-off thing <laughs> that we're doing. I don't know. I just wanted to lean in with the movie, the, the year <laughs> thing. Make it sound like we were doing something else. But yeah, uh, we were talking this week with uh, Thanksgiving and everything that happened last week and all of the crazy holiday stuff plus all the other just podcasting and stuff i'm doing we we're like we got to do something but i don't know what you know we have time for all this prep and everything it was like well let's do something fun let's find something different that doesn't require so much prep and so much work yeah and we were like well you know we got to talking about it it's like well, we do these you know look back specials for our season finales so to speak it's like, well, what if we took a little twist on that and did like a look forward special or a look ahead special? I don't know which one we landed on yet. You'll find out by the time you're listening to this, because that's the one that went into the title. Um, <laughs> once we've decided. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, we're basically, we're just have like a little, we have like a list of movies, 10 movies a piece that we will bring up, sort of pitch to each other. Not really too much, but just talk about them and see like, hey, these are some movies that we've been thinking about separately. That would be fun to talk about in the future and cover on this podcast kind of give us some reasons why maybe uh some of these will sound real fun to us as we're talking about them a little bit no spoilers for any of them of course we'll try to keep it pretty vague pretty simple but just kind of give some ideas of why they'd be fun to talk about and then yeah maybe some of these will get prioritized to do more uh soon and then of course we reached out to you guys online and through different avenues just to see what you guys thought. And we actually did get quite a bit of good feedback this week. And I'm really excited to to read those and yeah. know what you guys said, because the, the movies that you guys really want us to cover, you're why we're doing this is so you're listening. So uh, of course we will definitely try to hit up, hit up some of those movies in the near future. So thank you guys so much for your feedback, even though we haven't got to that yet. I'll thank you now. And then I will thank you again down the road. Once we uh, get to the feedback after we're done with our stuff. So <laughs> Yeah, I really like this idea that we came up with because it plays on what we've done in the past with our look back specials, but it gives it a little bit of a twist. And I don't know about you, but I had a ton of fun coming up with movies to bring to the table because I wanted to pick some that I hadn't, you know, some, yes, we've mentioned before, some might have been on our list, but further down. But then I tried to come up with a few that were not ones that we've talked about. So there'll be a little bit of a surprise. At least I'm hoping. Nice. That'll be, that'll be fun. Uh, I didn't put so much work into mine. Um, it was literally just like a, you know, five minutes while I was having dinner uh, last <laughs> night to be like, what are some movies that would be fun? Let me think real quick and put some stuff down. And so pretty much all of them, I think we've, I've mentioned or talked about, but me and you, when we're not recording, we talk movies and what we'd like to cover. And we kind of plan and stuff so much anyway. We do. That, I think all of these have come up in conversation and I've actually got more than 10 on here. So some of these I have listed, I won't even talk about because I was like, well, like, uh, you know, maybe like, you know, honorable mention is like, no, we can't do I know. that. Because I thought the same we thing. Can't, can't tip our scale too much. Cause like, you know what, maybe if we do this again, we'll have more movies yes. to talk about later that we still haven't done. Yeah. So keep it. I had a couple uh, that I left <laughs> off. I'm thinking, yeah, I really want to do these, but Let's go in this direction because it's something I haven't suggested before. And it's something that, I, you know, there's a couple that I just thought of and we haven't talked about it before. Yeah. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to break this down with you and, you know, share mm -hmm. some maybe some hidden gems that I haven't talked about before. So really, really excited. Yeah. And I tried to I tried to spread them out as far as you know, kind of genre and style. Like yeah. I wanted to make sure I have like a disaster movie in here. I wanted to make sure I have like a creature kind of thing in here. I wanted to make sure, you know, I had more monster action. I wanted to have something that's a little more 
supernatural since we've been playing with that yeah a little bit more recently as well so i did want to touch on a couple of different genres and styles me too when i went when i went down through i was looking and thinking oh that's too many of this i kind of need to shift gears and pick i tried to be well-rounded like you i i tried to to pick some Mm -hmm. that hit in the in different points of our theme for run for your lives so i think i did a decent job I've got a couple of like yeah. category headers and then a couple movies under each one. So, so we'll see how that goes. So who wants to go okay. first? Oh, that is the great question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't mind going first because I have, yeah, All I have right. a bunch. So I am going to start off with one that we have never talked about. It is one that was from 2002. It's so one I liked. It stars Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale. And it's called Reign of Fire. Okay. Yeah. It's set in 2020, which is kind of comical if you think about it. But um, it's 20 years after some tunnel workers in London have woken up some dragons. The dragons have taken over. And there are these two groups that have to work together to try to take them down. So Interesting. I have not heard of this. Pick, it is not well received. Like, it is not everyone's <laughs> cup of tea. However, I like it, and I have never really mentioned it to you. Yeah. And when I was looking through movies today, I thought, man, we have never talked about doing that one. And I'm really curious, honestly, to what you would think of it. So we have to do it. Like, it's one that I really want to put on the list. I have a feeling some folks are going to be rolling their eyes thinking, oh, that one. But there will, I think, also be people that, like me, appreciate the movie for what it is. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no, I'm definitely very intrigued to to check that out. Um, <laughs> for those who know, I have my little cheat sheet. I have uh, IMDb open in a little... A window on my computer as we're talking so I can look at different things and use it as reference while we're talking. And so, yeah, pulling that one up, I'm like, huh, I don't know if it's going to be any good in my opinion, but it's definitely something unique <laughs> that I haven't, haven't even heard of or seen. So it would definitely yeah. be something fun to jump into and talk about. I think I could have a fun time with it. Either it would be surprising. I think I yeah, have a really too. surprising time and enjoy it. Or if I don't, I think I can still have a lot of fun talking about it. <laughs> yes, you'll, and you know what? It's one that if you completely shred, I'm not going to be upset. Yeah. Like, you can tear it to pieces and I'll be okay with it. Uh-huh. So I just thought it'd be a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah. It's kind – yeah, it's it's different. And I haven't seen it for a long time, so I have no idea how the CGI holds up at all. So it could be really bad. And you could really break down and, you know – thrash that to pieces if you want (laughs) (laughs) all right um and i don't even have a set order of mine i'm just going to be pulling them out at random i think just whatever fits the mood at the time so to follow that up i'll go with another thing that uh it time frame wise is just funny to look at now um let's talk i'll talk about (laughs) the disaster movie 2012 uh. <laughs> oh my god is that what i think it is yes it is oh my gosh do you know this almost made my list really <laughs> but it didn't because i picked something else and i'll segue into that one after we talk about this one. yeah i'm course, glad you bring it up yeah because i like it actually 2009 disaster movie kind of based off of the whole you know before pre 2012 with the whole Mayan calendar and everybody like, Oh, what else going to end in 2012? Which is funny. So, you know, it'd be great to go, you know, look back at that movie and see how historically accurate it is to what happened that year. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're still here. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> assuming nothing like that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going through quite a bit of a pandemic right now, but um there are no disasters of water and tsunamis and volcanoes rising from the earth. There are cities falling into the sea. So I think, you know, on that front, we're doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I had that in thought because I was like, honestly, I haven't even seen it. I just know it's it's not that well. You haven't seen it? Like, no. And I know that it really wasn't even... <laughs> 
you know, that well received by my audiences either. It wasn't. Kind of, and so, like, there are, I do have fun watching movies that aren't that great sometimes because it is, it still spurs like fun and usually humorous conversations. And so I don't mind, like, purposely jumping into the happening last season on here. We did that knowing full well it was, it was going to be a yes, riot. And-, we did. <laughs> and it was. It's one of our most popular episodes, too. Mm hmm. It yeah. really is. I think there are other people that just want to listen to us bash it. Yeah. Shred it, tear it to pieces. Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I had no idea that you hadn't seen 2012. So, so far, we've talked about two movies. You haven't seen either one of them. Yeah. That is good. Mm-hmm. I like exposing I you to some new movies. I have seen a lot of movies. So... <laughs> 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 not super surprising <laughs> but you've seen a lot of movies there are just a lot of movies you haven't seen yeah like <laughs> in addition to the many movies that you've seen so yeah we're gonna have to change that you know we can use this podcast to uh, expand your horizons Absolutely. and expose you to some movies that you may be happy you saw or ones that you wish you'd never seen i guess we'll find out mm-hmm <laughs> All right, what do you have as your next choice? My next one? Okay, so mine are in no particular order, so I'm kind of doing this free flow thing like you are, where we'll just segue from one to the next. One of mine is not even out yet, but it's by the same director, Roland Emmerich. He brought us The Day After Tomorrow, which I know we both kind of liked. Mm-hmm. Um, it is called Moonfall, and it comes out in February 2022. It stars Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson, and John Bradley, which we all know from Game of Thrones. Basically, the premise is when the moon is knocked off its orbit and it's headed to Earth, a NASA executive tries to convince others that she knows how to save the world before the catastrophe happens. And to me, that is especially a Run for Your Lives movie. Oh, like, yeah. it's it's got everything that we want. So this movie came on my radar because of John Bradley. I just went down a a Game of Thrones rabbit hole and I was looking at different movies that some of the stars had been in, trying to find out if maybe some of them were in movies that we could cover, which I did find a few. This one stood out to me because it's going to be a new one. And I know how much we love doing new movies. Yes, that one. Yeah, it's good to have on the radar for sure. Yeah. There's a few coming up soon that should be interesting. I don't think any of them are in my list, but... <laughs> That's okay. But always we'll good to look adding. at new movies. Absolutely. All right. Huh, let's see. What's the next one to go with? I'm going to stick with kind of more of the natural stuff for a little bit more. Um, this one could be interesting. I think I've mentioned this one to you before. I didn't hate it, didn't love it. It was an okay movie. I enjoyed watching it. It came out earlier this year, I think, at some point. But it is a movie called Those Who Wish Me Dead with Angelina Jolie and Nicholas Holt. Ooh, okay. Uh, John Bernthal, Aidan Gillen. Uh, it was, it's, it's interesting. She plays kind of like a uh, natural like parks kind of firewatch person. And then there's also like this son of some person who has been killed and then the the little boy has taken off with some information that his dad was killed for and so these uh these guys are hunting the kid down to to kill him as a witness and also take this information or whatever and so he and angelina jolie team up as these hitmen have basically set fire to the forest to to weed him out and they have to kind of (laughs) survive this fire while also trying to get like escape these like gun hitman it's really interesting i i had a good time with it <laughs> i have not seen that one yet it's on my radar though because you mentioned it to me a while back i remember yeah we talked about it and i really want to see it because the cast sounds good to me is it mm-hmm. the blockbuster cast that you get in some movies no but it's the cast i want to see so i'm really excited yeah i'm gonna put that on my list and we will definitely be covering it here on run for your lives yeah, <laughs> I, I did. I watched it kind of back when it came out, and it was one I was I was curious about. I watched it. And I was like, "Yeah, 
it was it was fine. I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. And it was like it'd be something that would be worth revisiting for this podcast and really kind of breaking into and and getting your thoughts plus anybody else who wanted to give us feedback if they watched it. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, we definitely have to do that. I've heard good things about it. Not just what you had said, but there were a few of my friends had posted about it on Facebook, so I think we definitely have to add it to the list. Right. So the next one I have is one that I have talked to you about, and we've actually decided I think we're going to do it next season, but I wanted to bring it up anyway because I think people should rewatch it all the time. And it's a Swedish movie called Lot Den Rata Koma, and it is Let the Right One In. came out in 2008. Mm-hmm. It's based on a John Linkvist novel of the same name, and it was remade here by Matt Reeves, which we've covered a few Matt Reeves movies. He's he's done a few things yeah. that that we like, so we have yeah. uh, been happy with what he brings to the table. So basically, it's a bullied child, and he develops a friendship with a little girl with a strange appetite, and. There was a remake, and it is a shot-by-shot remake. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be a lot of fun for us to do that, as we've talked about, for our Season 4 Double Dip. Mm -hmm. Double dips are always... I say always fun. We've done one. But but we've we've talked about some other ones, and... yeah. Yeah, so that, as soon as you say let the right one in, because I haven't seen the original Swedish one, I don't think. I've only seen the American remake. I have not seen the remake. I've seen the original. Hey, there we go. That's a fun angle to go into that one with. That's a great we'll angle to way. go in. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> with that. Then I'll have to watch the remake and you can watch the original. And Yeah. Yeah, I really loved this movie when I saw it for the first time, and I'm excited for us to cover it at some point in season four. Mm-hmm be good all right well while we're talking about double dips i don't know if we want to do (laughs) more than one double dip in a season because that's you know two movies except in this situation that i'm going to talk about we've talked about this one before this could be a double dip month of, of run for your lives where we could just hunker down buy a little vacation home in Derry, maine and hang out with with the Losers Club and Pennywise <laughs> with it. Um, <laughs> oh, I like this because, Peg, I wouldn't have to commute very far, would I? Yeah, you wouldn't have to go very far no, at all. I'm already in me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because uh, I was thinking it'd be a really fun kind of double dip thing. Because, I mean, yeah, the original It, the, the Tim Curry kind of TV miniseries, which is broken up into two parts with the kids and the adults. And then they've done that kind of the same thing with the Andy Machete It movies that came out more recently, where it's, you know, part one and part two, the kids, and then mainly the adults. It has kind of some flashbacks and stuff. But I was like, man, it'd be really fun to compare the early, because what was it, like 90 or 91, something like that? It was, it was around the late 80s, early 90s. I think it so, was like yeah, 1990. Was like right in there. Yeah. And uh, so kind of compare what happened with that, because it's a very different feel. It is. To the ones that we've gotten more recently. But I was like, but then the way to really break that up is you kind of have to do four episodes on it because you have to do both parts separately for each incarnation of it. So I was like, we'd spend a month on it, but, and I don't know if we'd want to do it all at the same time or trying to break it up, but you know, maybe that could be a good uh, Halloween well, we have Halloween the movie also to worry about. So I don't know. We'll figure it out somewhere in Maybe there. Maybe we can do it. Maybe we can do it pre-Halloween. Yeah. We'll do four <laughs> weeks of it and then Halloween. Yeah. I like the idea of doing four weeks of spending four weeks in dairy and breaking down those movies because I was I'm a huge fan of the original miniseries. Mm-hmm. And Tim Curry's portrayal of Pennywise was Oh yeah. Just incredible. So incredible. He was probably the best part of that movie was the way that he terrified me when I was watching it. So, yeah, I'm down with that. That sounds good to me. For sure. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's that's kind of a double dip thought. So is it kind of cheating for me to throw four movies into one point, into one choice here? Uh, no, because I make the rules. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to segue into one of my international films that I am bringing to the table this time. It is a 2009 film from South Korea. It was actually their first disaster film that they did. It's called Heian Day, and it translates to Tidal Wave. It's a fantastic, action-packed movie. One of the things I love about the Korean films is they... It's not one of those situations where you have a disaster and everyone lives. Mm -hmm. Your heart may be ripped out of your chest because someone in that film that you think is going to survive doesn't. So they don't hold back. They will go the full way. And you realize they're actually doing it. It breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. So um, Handay is a district in Busan that draws a lot of people to the beaches, you know, the tourists. And the premise is that the Sea of Japan is showing a similar pattern to what the Indian Ocean showed in 2004 before the earthquake and tsunami that um, took place, wiped out so many people in Thailand. So this is a little bit different, and it basically follows different people navigating this terrifying event. It's one I have not talked about, so this is... yeah. Want to bring to the table that I've never mentioned to you before. So you just keep holding back on all these movies. Where have they been? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I didn't realize how much I was holding back until I made this list. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never talked about this one with him. This mm. is great. You know, I like having some new ones. Right. Okay, for my next one, because we were kind of talking uh, holiday stuff a little bit last time on my point so i'll bring up christmas christmas is coming up so it i don't is. know I, I feel like i have two christmas movies here that i can choose from i'm only going to talk about one of them i think okay. but is it the one that you because we've talked about this before is it the one that i think we were pretty much set on doing this year and we can mm -hmm. go ahead and hype it up or do we want to just keep that one a surprise for a few more weeks until we cover it and then maybe set up a tease for what could come next year down the road. I think we need to keep that a secret for the next, at least the next two yeah. weeks. All right, cool. Yeah. Because people will see it very soon because Christmas is coming up way faster than any of us could ever uh, imagine. So, Oh my gosh. It'll be here tomorrow anyway. I, have, so <laughs> I am not even partway through my Christmas shopping yet. So I started yesterday. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah. hard. But yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll the, one of them we will cover very soon this year for Christmas. So you'll just wait and find that one out very soon. But for this one, I think it could be a fun one to talk about for maybe next year or if we do s multiple Christmas episodes this year or next year, whatever. But this one is very interesting. It would be something unique because it is zombies, which fits our theme very well. But it's also a musical. <gasps> Anna oh, and the Apocalypse. Oh. I love this one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, we have talked about this a little bit from time to time. It's a it's like Shaun of the Dead kind of hokey. Or I don't want to call it hokey, but you know the it's got the comedy and stuff in there. But like, I mean it's it's like, you know, Dawn of the Dead meets high school musical. It's what it is. I mean, it's these high yes. school students singing and dancing their hearts out and it's all very kitschy and Yes. It's it's adorable and hilarious and great. And so yeah. It is. I love it. I oh, it makes me want to do multiple Christmas episodes this right. year <laughs> just so we can talk about it cuz I love that one. It's so it's just when I watched it, I it wasn't what I expected in all of the most wonderful ways. Like it was right. just scary and hilarious and fun. Yep. And I haven't rewatched it since the first time I saw it, and I would love a reason to rewatch it. Yeah, no, that's I've only seen it the one time. I watched it kind of as my Christmas movie marathon for last year. Finally got around to watching it, and I was like, oh, this is so good. And like, 
I have the soundtrack added to my like Christmas music playlist that I have with all of my Christmas music. <laughs> so that's weird because you get Charlie Brown into Frank Sinatra and uh, you know some Bowling for Soup Christmas, and then like oh now here's some weird musical teenager singing about zombies. Why is this in here? But because uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas song, because mm-hmm. it it's about Christmas. Yes, I'm gonna have to go listen to this playlist because you know what? It's the time of year to do that, right? Oh yeah. Okay, well, I think I'll segue into my second film from South Korea that I'm bringing to the table. Ooh, double dose. A double dose. This one I have talked to you about before. We have not, um, it's on the list, but it's not something that we focused on. It's basically, it's called Taiwo, and it translates to The Tower. It's a 2012 film. It takes place in Seoul during a Christmas Eve party, and a fire captain and his team try to save guests and employees after a fire breaks out. A helicopter has accidentally slammed into the 120-foot two... No. A helicopter accidentally has slammed into the 120-story two-building structure called Tower Sky. It's basically South Korea's version of the Towering Inferno. Yeah, that's what I was but thinking. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit different, though. I mean, there are some different things that happen, and I really enjoyed it. It's one that I found on Amazon Prime, and I don't know if it's still available there, but I've watched it twice, I think. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And I know what, that we've talked about it before. Yes. Yeah, that would... That'd be cool. And I'm, man, I already had an appreciation for, but so with this podcast, doing this podcast has really opened up a whole new level of appreciation for South Korean cinema. Like, man. <laughs> They're doing so many things well. I just love that they have this point of view, that it may be something similar to what we've seen before. But they're not afraid to hold back. They will go and push right to the end. And you really will be on the edge of your seat wondering who's going to make it out at the end. And that is something we don't always get with films made in the U.S. Yeah. I feel like they want to keep the audience happy by having the couple survive and go off and have a happy life after. And that's not always what happens. So. Hmm. Like it. All right. So this that was your fifth one, right? And which would be my fifth. Is that where yes. we're at? All right. Yeah. This one has been in my mind the past however many weeks. Well, I say weeks for me, but people are listening to I think I think I talked about it in our Your Next episode. So I think it just came out last week. People have only heard it. But since we <laughs> recorded it, it's been in my head because I was talking about those uh, Halloween movie marathon kind of thing that I was doing. And naming off the movies yeah. that I had managed to watch on there. And then once I mentioned this one, last, so last week's episode, I, you, you people heard me listen to, uh, or list this one and talk about it. But it's been stuck in my head and I just want to like bring it back up because I think it would be so great. As much fun as Cooties was to cover, it's kind of in that same vein. Ugh. Of just hilarious, goofy, ridiculousness, comedy-wise. But uh, it is the movie Little Evil, because I brought that up in that list there. You did! I remember. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Gary, who is played by Adam Scott, marries the, you know, the woman of his dreams, Samantha, who's played by Evangeline Lilly. And so he marries this woman and she has a six year old son. So his new like stepson who he is fully convinced and pretty sure is the antichrist. So it's the omen. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> basically okay. with that. And he's just all the creepy stuff that's going on. It's directed by Eli Craig. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's hilarious. It's dark. It's funny. Which is part of hilarious, I know, but uh, you know, but then it's got heart. <laughs> There's a lot of heart to it too, because you know, he's he's just this you know, well off, well meaning stepfather coming in and and just trying to be the father figure that this demon child needs. So no, it's <laughs> it's great, uh, and yeah, the the cast, Wait. like I said, eventually Lily, Adam Scott, uh, Clancy Brown, Chris D'Elia, Donald Faison. It's fun. <laughs> 
We've talked to you about sometimes it's good to break into those more comedic horror type films because, yeah. you know, you're just sometimes things just get a little dark, either on other podcasts we're covering dark, darker material or just it's just fun to go down that road and get a break yeah. from some of the more serious stuff. So I've never seen it. So um, when it comes to this genre. Yeah. Very seldom do we find a movie that isn't something that I've already seen. Yeah. So I'm down with that. I think it's good. I like the suggestion. I think it's great. All right. And that will bring me to my next one, which is, um, this is uh, has been on our list. It often gets overlooked, but I think it's one that we should do at some point. And it's, it's called Daylight. Came out in 1996. It's directed by Rob Cohen. There's a New York tunnel, and there are explosions that collapse both ends of it, so people are trapped in the middle. It is a Sylvester Stallone movie, which is not something that we've really covered on this podcast yeah. before. <laughs> that fit, seems like it fits more over on Adrenaline Cinema most of the time. <laughs> it does. And I think kind of it could fit with Adrenaline but he's basically, he plays this kind of disgraced EMS chief who is the only one basically that can get everyone out. And um, it also stars Amy Brenneman and it has uh, Viggo Mortensen, who I think this came out before Lord of the Rings. He plays this like adventure sports company spokesperson who thinks he can do everything with his climbing equipment. And I'm not going to spoil how it ends for him. Mm -hmm. But I think this would be a good one. Oh, yeah. This is anything that this podcast has done. You kind of hinted that earlier is <laughs> made me watch a lot of movies that I probably never really would have gotten around to otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I've made you watch a lot of long movies. Yeah. Because it seems like the movies that I pick are the longer ones. <laughs> right. But hey, I I pitched 2012 at the beginning of this. That thing's two hours and 40 minutes. So... Yes, I <laughs> I'm down with that, though. I've seen it multiple times. Despite the fact that I know people ha do not like it, I'm not one of those people. I, I like it mm -hmm. for what it is. I like the effects. I like the disaster part of it. So, yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> All right. So what do you have next? Hmm, I'm trying to decide. I'm going to do one and then I'm going to do the other. So do you want like an older movie? Or an animated movie. Because I'm going to do both. Oh so my god, you've brought an next. animated movie. Yeah. <gasps> an animated... You have brought an animated movie. Okay. Um, Let's do older first. We'll save the okay. animated one for next. All right. So this one... So we haven't talked... I mean, we, you brought up dragons a little bit earlier. <laughs> but, and zombies, mm -hmm. but, but we haven't talked about too many, like, creature feature kind of movies as far as... Within that realm of, but it could be possible. Um, and so that's why I'm bringing arachnophobia to the table right here. <laughs> ooh, ooh. We have talked about this one. Oh, yeah. That always makes me think of Eight-Legged Freaks, which we did cover. I guess mm -hmm. just the silliness, because they are, there are those moments in it where you're just kind of like, wow. And plus John Goodman. Yeah, I mean, John I Goodman mean, and, and Jeff Daniels. It's going to have a healthy little dose of, of humor to it, but it's not slapsticky like Eight-Legged Freaks was. No. No, not at all. Not at all. It just makes me think of it because it's spiders, too. Yeah. That's for sure. I like that idea. <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah. Say older. It's 1990. It's... <laughs> it's that's, I mean, that's still been over 30 years at this point. Like, <laughs> we can call oh, it Oh, don't older. even say that. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that when Tremors came out? Yep. When did Tremors come out? Yeah. I want to say Tremors was 90 or 91. Yeah. Just off the top of my head. <laughs> Which happens to be our first episode ever of this podcast. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that episode, you should definitely go back and check it out because it's one of Pake's favorites. And he has a proper nerd out about it. So it's lots of fun. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go back about a decade before that for a creature movie that stars Robert Forster. 
And it's one I've mentioned. I know you have not seen this movie, but I believe Mark and I've talked about it before when we were talking about movies to this podcast. And it's basically the movie Alligator. Huh. After a dad flushes his daughter's pet baby alligator down the toilet, Ramon, which is what she names the poor <laughs> little alligator, consumes experimental growth formula and grows to an enormous size and terrorizes the sewers and streets of Chicago. All right. <laughs> it's really good. I love it. It's really old, though. Like, it's not. The effects are not great now. They don't hold up. But, oh, my gosh. It's just, it's one of those films. I remember watching it as a teenager, and I really enjoyed it. And since then, I've watched it a couple of times, mm -hmm. more recently, because it's just fun to go back. It does, um, it does have a sequel, but the sequel, the, uh, not as good. <laughs> I like the original. Right. So, yeah. All kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's a treasure trove of creature features and stuff that are older that you never know what you're going to find. Yep. <laughs> Some of that stuff. You don't. And I feel like it's a lot of fun when we get to go down that. Cause we can talk about, okay, yes, the seriousness of the story or whatever, but we always have fun talking about the silliness. Yeah. Like the, the effects or, or some of the silly things that the characters do and how things are just so different now. So that's one I definitely want to do soon. Right. My next one, I teased it last time, so this, then the animated one. I think it'd be fun oh, to kind of go in more uh, like kid-friendly movies, animated movies, uh, that still fit in our genre. You know, mm -hmm. we did uh, Camp Cretaceous with Greg, which was awesome, and I definitely want to cover the other yes. seasons of that with him in the future. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, just as a movie, animated movie, and maybe kind of do the same style of, you know, keeping it a little cleaner and keeping things there. It'd be great to have a kid on to talk about some of these movies, but kids that want to do a podcast, that's not a like, <laughs> thing that exists. So that's probably never going to happen. But, um, but it's just, but, you know, I, I wonder with some of these, just like, you know, what would be like the difference of like our opinion looking at it versus like a act, like a child in that moment? Like, oh, what is this? Yeah, movie? definitely. But, but good luck getting a kid to take notes on a movie and want to talk about anything. So that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, you'd have to have specific questions, I think. I'm thinking about my seven-year-old niece and what she would say about movies that she watches. You'd have to have, like, specific questions, like, really detailed questions to get yeah. the response that you want on a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just be, yeah, too much. Do, we already do work on this podcast. We don't need to do that much work. <laughs> to bring it, doing that. No, but uh, definitely comes from my favorite stop motion animation movie company from Leica Studios, the wonderful Paranorman. You have talked about this movie quite yeah. a few times. It has been one that we have tossed around. I am not opposed to it. I think that we should do it. I think it's one that we shouldn't wait a long time because I, with the holiday season, it gets tricky to try to record episodes during this time of year. So mm -hmm. let's do one that's a little more fun. Yeah. And that could be a lot of fun. I like yeah. that. It's 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 great. I mean, it is. It's it's a zombie apocalypse movie, but through through the eyes and lens of, of a group of kids. And it's more family friendly. I mean, it still definitely has its very intense moments. It. <laughs> Uh, Leica, Leica does not pull punches when it comes to being real creepy and scary, even as like kids movies and with stop, mo stop motion animation. Not the, should I be name dropping other movies while we're doing this? I don't know. Cause maybe it fits, but I mean, they're the ones that did Coraline and as much of the Ooh, kids I... movie that is, it is fucking creepy sometimes. So <laughs> yes, I have not seen Coraline, but every time, everything I have seen from that movie Makes me think of the game Little Nightmares. It's yeah. just super creepy. So, yeah. I think Coraline kind of fits, too. Yeah. I think that could fit. It could. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> I think we could make it fit. I think we can. I think we should. I think we should do more kid-friendly stuff. So, I think that's a great idea. Well, my next one is one that I have talked about before. 
Not recently, but it's one that I mentioned, I think, the last time that Rima joined us when we talked about the Meg. And it is a 1977 film called Orca. It is directed by Michael Anderson. It's basically a male orca decides to track a boat captain and go after him for revenge after the boat captain has killed his pregnant mate and baby. And it start. It has a great cast. Richard Harris is the boat captain. It also stars Charlotte Rampling, Bo Derek, and a young Robert Carradine prior to his stint on Revenge of the Nerds. And so this is one that I'm actually going to bring up. Um, this is one I'd love to have Rima come on and join us for. Yeah, I think even when we, we kinda, did Jaws in like season one, we had mentioned this to her at some point. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to have her come on because I feel like any any sea creature movie like this, I like to have her on because we always have a really good time breaking it down. Oh yeah, and this is an old one, and I don't know how long it is, but I'm afraid that it's lo- <laughs> longer than. <laughs> <laughs> I worry about the length now. I don't <laughs> want to have four hour movies or anything, but I think it's it might be like over two, but I'm not sure. Can't remember. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's only an hour and thirty two. Really? Yes. That's all. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I think we can live with it then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My list is getting much smaller. Um, so is out. mine. I see this. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go with, you know, maybe in the vein of what we're covering next week, which we'll talk about later. We've been uh, yes. digging in a little more into some of the supernatural kind of we have spirits and ghosts and stuff like that. And so I have to go back to my favorite of those kind of paranormal supernatural movies, the one that really did the most for me when I first saw it, where I just had to be like, holy shit, this was really well done and just gave a whole new life to this genre. And that is 2010's Insidious. Ooh. Directed by James Wan. Uh, Yeah, Insidious is super creepy. It's oh, like it's real creepy. So creepy. Yeah. Cause that's, uh, yeah, it was directed by James Wan, uh, written by Lee Wanell, which we love some Lee, Lee Wanell Le- around here. Lee Wanell is wonderful. <laughs> he has come up with some great, great stuff. He brought us the Saw franchise. I mean, he was part of that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And then his, it's his incredible. role in Cooties was incredible. Um, <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, but Patrick Wilson and Rose oh. Byrne, and then Young, maybe one of the first roles from Ty Simpkins as the 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 really the young kid, the main kid in this movie, because it's basically this kid goes into a coma, and it's like a haunted house movie, except maybe it's not the house that's haunted, you know? <laughs> yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, it's. To this day, it's it's still one of my absolute favorite like paranormal movies because it's just so unique and creative and well done, and it's all special effects like or like you know practical effects with the stuff, and oh, it's just so good. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it is really good. I and I haven't watched it since it came out. Like it's been mm-hmm. a long time, so that would be fun to revisit. And we're talking about fun revisiting a terrifying movie, but it is yeah. fun. That's why we love doing this podcast. Absolutely. We wa- we like the creepy stuff. That's why we're doing it. Like, that's why that's our focus. So, yeah. Okay. Well, my next one is one that we have talked about, but we have not talked about in a while. It's a 2015 Norwegian film called The Wave. And the cinematography in this film is just incredible. All of the disaster elements, everything that happens, just incredible. And it's basically this geologist who's on his last day at work. He uncovers signs of an avalanche. And of course, no one wants to listen. The result is a rock slide and tsunami. And so he is forced to fight to try to save his family and everyone else from the impending doom. All the elements for a great disaster film. Yeah. 
So we've talked, yeah, we've talked about that one before, but I really wanted to kind of bring it more to the forefront again. Mm -hmm. I think it's one that I'd love to co cover pretty soon. Next couple months. Yeah, we've uh, we've got so many movies, like, you know, as we, we keep doing episodes, <laughs> always, we're just trying to bring you stuff like every week. <laughs> so it's like, you, you think, you oh, we got movies forever. And it's like, oh, man, we find ourselves being like, what are we going to do next? So this episode is also just a great way for us to, yeah, like, here's a good list of movies that we can pick from. And people know that we have a bag to, to grab out of for yes. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. For every, you know, for every movie that we're bringing to the table, I feel like there's four or five more that we're not bringing. Like, there's just so many good ones. Yeah. It's hard. All right. Okay. What's so your next one? My next pick, I feel like it's not super creative because I'm literally, I mean, it goes hand in hand with the last one that I just did. Um, because I had Insidious. So with this next one, from director James Wan and writer Lee Wan L teaming up again <laughs> together. <laughs> Imagine that. Right. They work together a lot. Yes. We have the cast like Ryan Quentin, Amber v Valletta, Donnie Wahlberg, Judith Roberts. What about Dead Silence from 2007? Oh my God. Oh my God. That is uh, a young widower returning home. To find answers about his wife's murder, only to find out that the uh, ghost of a deceased ventriloquist and his dummies may be involved in something, too. So. Oh, <laughs> it sounds equally hilarious <laughs> and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> so, I'm <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I've not seen that. In so I think I've only seen it once. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like once you've seen it, you know what the you know you know what's going on. Yeah. And so, for me, sometimes the fun of watching a movie is uncovering what's happening. And so, once I figured it out, it's not as big a, like seeing it again. I don't really need to do. But I'm happy to revisit it for the podcast. It's been so long; I can't even remember it, mm -hmm. except for what the twist is. So, <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay this next one that i have um is one that falls within a genre we've we've dipped our toe in a little bit um not as much as some of the others but more recently we have done some movies and it is world war z which was directed by mark forster now, this is a movie, there's a lot of drama around it, because it's called World War Z. It's one that is based on a book by Max Brooks, but it isn't. Ma the book World War Z is more of accounts throughout yeah. the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And people who went to see this movie complained a little bit about it. You can't bring Max Brooks the book to life on the screen in an interesting right. way right. because of the way that it's written. And it's a fantastic book. And I've listened, I have the audio book. I've listened to it a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. I've also, I have a paper copy of the book and I've read it. I separate this in my head. This movie is different to me. Yeah. Um, Drew Goddard, who we're very familiar with on Run for Your Lives <laughs> because he directed Cabin in the Woods and he wrote Cloverfield. He was one of the screenwriters on World War Z. And I love this film and feel like there's a lot of good points to to discuss, even though there are some also some not so good points to discuss. I really like this film. Yeah, so I, I would love to talk about it. Yeah, I love that movie as well. And it's kind of coming from the same thing as I had read the book before. And really love the book, but like knowing going into that movie, I was like, it's not going to be the book because it can't be. You can't do no. It's not a medium that works one way to the other. You kind of have to. Mm -mm. It's in name only there, and but that's okay because it really takes on a life of its own. I think having somebody like Brad Pitt in that movie gave it the star power it needed to really take off. And have a lot yeah. of people see it and get the kind of big opening and everything that it did. 
but it wasn't just like a cash grab with a big name because I really think it had something to show. I think it was a really good movie. Well, I think too, they took pieces of the book. There were different yeah. scenes in the movie that I remember from the book. There were just these little connections. So yeah. it made sense to me, but I didn't look at it as, oh, look what they did. This isn't the same, blah, blah, blah. No, I was happy with this. And when we talk about it, we'll both be able to talk more about, you know, what we liked or disliked about the film. But I wanted to bring this to the forefront. Not that we're going to cover a million zombie films. I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with doing zombie films. That's why I know I we started zombies. all of this as being zombie fans. I know. And like... I know. It's how we know each other. I mean, really, yeah. the whole zombie genre. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, Pake, we have reached the final one. What is it? Because, you know, I'll, I'll jokingly complain about long movies, and since this one clocks in at three hours and seven minutes, uh, you're already like, why oh, Why is man. he doing this? And and also, yeah, um, just kind of the action-adventure more focused thing. But I think, you know, we loved Kong Skull Island so much. Yes. It could be fun to revisit Skull Island. In a different form, through the 2005 Peter Jackson King Kong. Oh, goodness. Really? Yeah, you know. Head there with Naomi Watts and Jack Black and Adrian Brody. Colin Hanks. Andy Serkis doing his thing. Kyle Ugh. Chandler. Hey, there's a connection to both universes of the King Kong. <laughs> um. <laughs> it sounds like we have, we'll have to discuss connecting those dots. I mean, wow. I yeah. did not know that you were going to bring that to the table. So, yeah. okay. All right. That sounds it's a, good. It's a long one, but it, it kind of is an epic. Like, you know, it, it, it has its moments where it feels a little draggy. It shouldn't be that long. I will agree yeah. with that. I'm sure we would talk about that if we cover it. But, yeah. but Jack Black brings so much to it. And I do think it has a lot of merit on its own that, I mean, with Peter Jackson behind it, the cinematography and just the visuals and then the story that's brought up, it is some somewhat of a spectacle for sure. All right. Well, Peter Jackson, I mean... It goes without saying that he brought us the amazing Lord of the Rings trilogy yeah. plus the Hobbit trilogy. He also brought this mo one movie that I can't stand. I think it's called Dead Alive. Brain Dead. It's got a bunch of different names. <laughs> it's kind of a zombie film that I don't enjoy, which there aren't many of them. But I like the idea of going back to Skull Island. I want to see. I've never seen it. So oh, interesting. it's one that... Yeah. So it'd be different. It'd be cool to go back and look. Yeah. To see what it brings, because it would have to be something pretty fantastic to pass Skull Island. I, Skull Island. I'm going to go ahead mind. and tell you now, I don't think it Heart. would. I don't think it would. No, but <laughs> it won't. I mean, does it have, does it have Tom Hiddleston running through creatures? Strangely Slicing enough, up. it does. No, I'm kidding. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, no. That, that yeah, it'll go, it, it's going to be hard to top that. It really is. But, yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's our lists. We did it. I can't we believe we did it. It was a lot of fun to come up with. I feel like mm. we should do more of these. Yeah. Give us a break from regular podcast. Podcasts. I would say, like, definitely not, like, more than once a year. But this could be, no. you know, around this time, end of November, beginning of December, could be a kind of good time to, you know, look ahead to the next year and things that could be coming up. I think that's a great idea. I think we, you know what, it could be our Thanksgiving type. It could be our special at Thanksgiving, maybe. Yeah. Because we're not going back we to Thanksgiving. Just... That killed Thanksgiving no. specials um, on movies. No, no, <laughs> no. Turkey, one time. Turkey once, and yeah. I no, I have no desire to know what Turkey does next because he's already done enough damage. No. <laughs> I don't need to see any more of it. Nobody needs to see any more of it. I have yeah, seen any no. more of it. I don't. I didn't need to see more of it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and I'm not going to see it to join you on that level of pain. I'm just not. <laughs> tr- no, not going to happen. All right. With that finishing our lists, now comes the part that I'm actually really excited for here. Let's just see what some of you guys, the listeners, brought to us and what you think we should cover in the future. Absolutely. Let's hear your ideas. It sounds great. All right. Since you were going first on the lists, we'll just keep that going. Let you go first. Here. Let's keep it going. <laughs> okay. So we heard from Mo Favo, who said that three older films that had me on the edge of my seat. One, The Boys from Brazil. Two, Three Days of the Condor. And three, Marathon Man. Not supernatural, and humans are very scary, are the scary monsters. Get that? Oh, my gosh. I have seen one of those out of the three. Three Days of the Condor. It was actually really good. She says, could be a fun change of pace. On the more humorous side, there is Charade. And on the disaster side, the original Poseidon Adventure. Surprisingly, I didn't put Poseidon Adventure on my list because it's one that I know we've talked about covering so many times. Uh, Because it's come up so many times in the past few episodes anyway, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're aware. (laughs) Mm. We definitely need to do that one sometime soon. Yeah. We're going to get there. All right. This from our good friend on Twitter, Tony. Says, hey, Daphne and Paik, I was going through free Prime movies and found three movies that I enjoyed that I wanted to see if you would be interested in. First, 47 Meters Down, Uncaged. Second, The Reef. Both of these are pretty good shark movies. Third, The Ruins is a very underrated horror movie. I think the acting and story are very good, pretty gory and scary with a lot of tension. I have seen The Reef. I want to say I've seen The Reef. Is that the one with uh, with Blake Lively? I believe so. Yes, I saw that one in theaters. I liked that with some one. Friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of lots of tension in that one. Yep. Um, she was such a badass. Yeah. though. it was really good. Um, the ruins I have seen. It's very creepy. I think it totally fits in our vibe because you definitely would want to be running from the monster in that film. So yeah, right. totally agree, Tony. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I'll take number three from Harrison. Hi, Harrison. Um, The Gamera reboot films in the 90s, beginning with Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, were among my favorites. The second one, Attack of Legion, was probably the best. They captured some of the cheesiness of the originals I watched on TV as a kid while actually making or actually being good movies. They're still my favorite monster movies. I'd also love to hear you talk about Carnival of Souls. A truly chilling movie from 1962 that George A. Romero and others cited as an inspiration. I think it's it was amazing for its time and still holds up. No one has recommended that one before. But I've seen it recently when I was flipping through stuff to watch. So, hmm. Nice. Yeah. Seems interesting. If it inspired George A. Romero, then I'm in for sure. I'm in. (laughs) And then, yeah, the, the Yeah, the Gamera stuff, since he mentioned that. I'm assuming because he's saying it's 90s reboot stuff of them, which he said are actually good. Because the only thing I know of Gamera is probably the originals. And the only way I know of those is because they covered all of them or did episodes of all of them on Mystery Science Theater 3000. So (laughs) probably not the ones he was talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Mark had mentioned them to me at one point, and yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, but like I said, the so only thing I know about them that... is the old black and white ones. I'm assuming they're the originals from the 60s then that yeah. Mystery Science Theater has has decimated those ones. But he said these were reboots oh. that were actually good movies. So I'm hoping. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. That sounds good. I'll uh-huh. have to check into that. All right. Now, this one comes from our friend Amelie. So good to hear from you. She says, I apologize. You've already covered some of these. Some of them I haven't seen but would like to, and some I haven't seen in a long time. She goes to say, The Shining, Midsummer, The Scream Movies, Black Christmas from 1974, Ringu or The Ring, Poltergeist, Blair Witch, It, The Fly, 
Dracula, The Mist. She has not seen that one. Lost Boys, The Others, The Dead Zone, Nightmare on Elm Street, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, and Psycho. It's a lot Ooh, of okay. classics in there. Yes. And we have not covered any of those, so you did not did not We haven't catch us on any of them. I like the idea of covering the mist. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I like the idea of covering most of these. I mean, if we go into the mist without spoiling things, because she says she hasn't seen it, but I already know, like, just thinking about covering them, like, it would be fun to cover, but I'm already frustrated thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I think I know exactly yeah, what yeah. you're referring to. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it already frustrates me. I'm like, yeah. oh. Uh, yeah. It is. It's difficult. It is difficult. <laughs> A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night is really, I have seen that one. It's kind of artsy, and I'm interested in what you would think about it. So that's one we may have to tackle sooner rather than later. But I thank you, Amelie. I really like all of the ones that you've mentioned, except one, but we all know how I feel about Midsommar. <laughs> I've mentioned it before. That might be a fun. That might be a good idea just to revisit that movie, just to see if our thoughts change on it. Diving deeper into it, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if they can. Maybe. I don't know. It's. I'm not going to change my mind like I did on the ritual with the Jotun. No, the, I don't see that happening. That was a rare occurrence. <laughs> Back when we were doing rankings, ratings, right. which we're not doing anymore, which is good because I don't have to think about that extra stuff. Yeah. Um. So the next one is from Jerry, and he just suggested the giant spider invasion from 1975. He even included a link to YouTube. So it must be available to watch on there, and I have not had a chance to check it out. So I don't know how good it is, but I'm picturing something that could be really cheesy, and I'm okay with it. So we'll have to, I'll have to check it out and see. Yeah. If it's something that we can cover. Be interesting. Older stuff can be really fun sometimes to just jump into, especially if we don't know much about it, which hasn't really happened a whole lot. At least not for you. No. <laughs> Yeah, there is one um, that starred a spider movie called Kingdom of the Spiders. It was came out in the 70s, starred William Shatner. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that sounds like a hot mess. I think it is a hot mess, and I think it would be so much fun. <laughs> I think it'd be a lot of fun. I think we could cheese out over it for like an hour. I think oh, it could be really funny. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> All right. And then this last one comes to us uh, on Twitter from user Tarkus. Says, let's see Bubba Hotep from Dusk Till Dawn and Planet Terror come to mind as movies that I don't think you've covered that should be fun. Yeah. Ooh, from Dusk okay. Till Dawn so, is such an incredible choice. It oh, really it is. is. I feel like it gets overlooked. I feel like mm -hmm. in, the, in the world of Quentin Tarantino... So many other movies get talked about before that one. And it really is well done. The cast is fantastic. The script is good. Like, the whole movie is really, really stellar. So, I am, I think, yeah, I, those are great suggestions. Baba Hotep, I've heard of. I have never seen it. I have friends who have seen it and liked it, but I have never seen it. And Planet Terror. Was it like the Grindhouse stuff? With Robert Rodriguez. Oh my god, that would be fun to cover. Yeah. Which isn't, because you said, is it Rodriguez also from Dust Till Dawn? Tarantino wrote it. Okay. Like, well, he did the screenplay. Rodriguez directed? So. Yeah. yeah. I already closed my IMDb, okay. so I'm just pulling off of my top of my brain at this point. But I was like, yeah, I think. Yeah. I really like it. Overall, it's a fantastic movie. Like, the whole, the cast is just incredible, so... It's one I had thought about, but I never really, like, it never made the, any list yeah. that we have. So I think it's one we can definitely think about. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for all of your suggestions for films for us to cover. 
Lots of great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> if you would like to submit feedback on a future episode or give us feedback on a past episode that we've done, you can do so at our Facebook page at h at facebook.com slash run for your lives podcast. You can email us at run for your lives podcast at gmail.com. Tweet at us on Twitter at RFYL podcast. Message us on Instagram at run for your lives podcast. And if you're enjoying the show, tell your friends. We're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, pretty much all the podcast players, including YouTube. Go to runforyourlivespodcast.com for all the links you'll ever need and give us a review on Apple Podcasts. So that's the best way to share the love and get us out there even more. We really appreciate it. Absolutely do. Speaking of sharing the love, I'll give a couple little shout outs to things going on in the podcast universe around us. Of course, my other podcast, Strange Indeed, we are still covering Dexter, New Blood. Holy crap, that's been so good. Me and Rima having a blast on that. And then me, Rima, and Jason also covering Lock and Key Season 2 over on Strange Indeed with our little uh, Great British Baking Show or Great British Bake Off, depending on where you're at. Segments at the end. Of course, (laughs) this week's episode was the finale of this season or series of Bake Off slash Baking Show. So, yeah, uh, that was a, a fun run to cover the whole series or like the whole season. Lots of so who knew who knew we would get so emotionally invested in a bunch of nice British people baking cakes, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Then of course, uh, House Podcastica covering the Wheel of Time. Ben, uh, Greg, and Wendy over there crushing it. It's been so good. I love their dynamic on there. Greg is a super fan of the books and has read all of them multiple times. Ben has a sort of a relationship, has read most of the books, some of them, and kind of knows a lot of the main story stuff. And then Wendy is just jumping in completely blind with no prior knowledge of any of the source material and just along for the ride. And I think it's really cool that the three of them are able to bounce off of each other with the kind of their levels of understanding and knowledge of this series and get to look at it from different angles. And I love that. And it's been a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to listen to them. So check that out. Absolutely. Let's see, Walking Deadcast, Jason and Lucy still going with World Beyond over there. That's all I got to say. That show's been great. That's the only thing that they're covering. I hope, promise, to swear, don't <laughs> don't worry about anything yeah, else. Um, we <laughs> no, ju- just the World Beyond, which is ending. The series ends like very soon in the net, I think in a week or two. Mm-hmm. It's going to be over. Yeah, that's it. No, it's but... too bad because it's a great series. <laughs> I will they do. They are covering like five, ten minutes a piece on each week of Fear the Walking Dead. If you're watching that, they're oh, goodness. talking about it. But that's all I'm going to say at this point. You know how we are. <laughs> you mentioned. But just let it. you know. I didn't just, know if you were going to go. But there. just that way, people are like, "Oh, it's just World Beyond," and then they're going to be like, "Oh no, they're talking about Fear." So it's there, <laughs> but, but not much. As much as you want to talk no. about it. Um. See, yes. t- uh, TV Podcast Industries also covering Wheel of Time and Hawkeye on Disney Plus, which since last week when I said I wasn't able to watch it, I have watched it. And yes, very good as any Marvel series, of course, obviously is going to be. So check that out. Check out TV Podcast Industries on that. And finally, our friend Ben over on Wilhelm this week covering the Matrix franchise, getting ready for the new Matrix movie coming out in theaters soon covering the franchise before that and kind of getting amped up for it so if you're a matrix fan plug into wilhelm and check that out absolutely yeah i didn't want to see the new one because i didn't love the third one when it came out but i think i'm gonna have to watch it just (laughs) i'm gonna have to do it i gotta be a completionist i'm gonna have to check it out (laughs) It's just not on the top of my list. Yeah. There are other things. Understandable. So many things. So many things to watch. In all things. I know. It's hard. (laughs) So hard to prioritize. Yeah. All right. Daphne, why don't you tell everybody what is going on next week right here on Run For Your Lives. All right. It's well when two young girls lose their parents and make a creepy new friend who will stop at nothing to keep the girls to herself. You will have the 2013 Supernatural horror film 
Mama, directed by Andy Machete and based on his 2008 Argentine short film of the same name. This frightful tale is the focus of our episode next week. Right. It's one of my favorite horror movies. I have a blast with it. So it's good to cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun to talk about. Even though we, you know, we cover these movies that are sad, scary, frightening, terrifying, gross. It's just always fun to do it. Like, it's fun to talk about. So. Oh, yeah. It's cool. Lots of fun. All right. Well, and with that, we have come to the end of another fun episode. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I am Daphne. And I'm Paik. And if you have to run, you better run for your lives. Bye-bye.